Wow, what do you know? It's time for the Pocket Knife Show. Spring is here. Have you noticed the splashes of green? A few trees have hints of leaves. There are tufts of green in lawns, mostly dandelions in mine. Some flowers, though they haven't budded yet, are sending up shoots. We have a lilac bush on the east side of our house. I'd never have noticed its leaves coming out, but my wife, who loves the fragrance of those tiny purple blooms, happily informed me there are leaves on our lilac as we drove past it on the way to work. The current awakening of greenness reminds me of the garden of God as revealed to us in Genesis 2. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Must have been a beautiful place. I imagine it was like the botanical gardens I've visited on occasion. Times a thousand, or two, or three. God's garden was an ordered place with all kinds of plants, bushes, flowers, grasses, trees, a paradise where delightful food hung from fruit-laden branches, the sights and smells and sounds all producing pleasure. And in the middle of this stunning patch of greenery, two trees side by side are intertwined, Eat of the one and you'll enjoy life. Eat of the other and you'll die. God is good, isn't he? He reveals the truth to the man so he can live, so he can choose life rather than death. Tim Mackey, one of the founders of the Bible Project, introduced a truth to me about these two middle-of-paradise trees recently. When you go to the tree of life, the other tree, the death-producing one, it's right there. The choice to trust God's wisdom or his own is presented to Adam day after day after day. Mackey put it something like this, You have to walk past the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to get to the tree of life. For a time, it seems, Adam and the wife God gave him, Eve, did just that. They were content to obey God and enjoy fellowship with him. Until they weren't. The test came. The serpent, representing rebellion against God's good rule, suggests to the two of them that they take matters into their own hands. He tempts them to eat of the forbidden fruit in order to become like God, knowing and being able to discern or decide for themselves what's good and bad. Hearing the tempter's words and looking intently at the tree, the man and his wife decide they know better than God. They, wise in their own eyes, choose death. They grab what looks good and eat it, and immediately shame enters the world. Their eyes are opened, and they notice their nakedness for the first time ever. What happens next is not pretty. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Mankind, knowing good and evil, choosing what's right and wrong is, it turns out, the root of relational disaster. When you decide what's good for you with no thought of what God says is good, destruction will result. You'll hurt other people. You'll break fellowship with your maker. Remember Mackey's statement about walking past the one tree to get to the other? The same choice confronts you and me every time we're tempted to sin. We can choose life and walk past death, or we can stop and choose death. We can choose the spirit of the flesh, heaven, or hell. You feel sexually attracted to someone who is not your spouse. You can, trusting your own wisdom, fulfill the lust in your heart, or you can, trusting God's direction, abstain and pass the test. You want to lie about something, 
maybe to protect yourself. You can, trusting your own wisdom, deceive your neighbor, or you can, trusting God's direction, speak truthfully to your brother. You get angry at a person. You can, trusting your own wisdom, speak harshly to them and gossip maliciously about them. Or you can, trusting God's direction, answer them gently, kindly, wisely. You're harmed by another. You can, trusting your own wisdom, violently respond and find vengeance. Or you can, trusting God's direction, pray for them. You can bless rather than curse. You see something which belongs to another and want it. You can, trusting your own wisdom, take it for yourself, or you can, trusting God's direction, refuse to steal from your sister. Every time sin is presented to you as an option, you are standing before the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You are facing the same test Adam and Eve faced. You can unwisely choose the fruit of the forbidden tree, or you can wisely eat of the fruit of the tree of life. Choose life. Oh no, it's that I know we've come to the end of the show. See you next time.